Hi, my bows and bow ties. So look, I want to welcome you back to my channel. This is the Black Opinionated Woman, also known as a bow. In a previous video, what I did was I talked about my travels to Iceland. I gave a, gave a basic, I don't know, just summary of it. But now I want to talk about another location on what's called the Golden Circle. So, you know, Iceland is known as the land of fire and ice. So, um, but yeah, more specifically, I really just wanted to like talk to you about um, my adventure in Iceland when I visited Thingvellir or is it Pingvellir? You know, it is a national park. Like when you show up to this location, it's like gorge. I just want you to understand if you ever get a chance to go to Iceland, um, take a tour around the golden circle. That was the tour that I took. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, you can do a simple Google search, right? Those multiple tours you can do as far as like visiting Iceland. It's a small country. I'm just saying. So first, I just want to get into a couple of things. First, I want to um, point out there is... I don't really pronounce it correctly. So this is one way of pronouncing it. Now, before I get into it, you'll see it written in our tongue. If you are um, American um, and you speak English or, you know, like American English, not British English, not uh, Australian English. You know, if you're like American, American English, although I'm sure they're the same, it's written as thing valir or ping valir. I think Pingvalier is the Icelandic way of pronouncing it, but I don't have the tongue. So I'm going to play a sound that if you were to see Thingvalier, this is what it sounds like. Thingvalier. Thingvalier. So here it sounds like Thingvalier, right? But it's kind of like written as like Pingvalier. So yeah, anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Now, for those of you who don't know the Golden Circle, you know, it's it's approximately 190 miles. Um, it's like a tourist route along the like southwestern, I believe it's the southwestern Icelandic coast. I guess it's about 25 miles east of Reykjavik, so, or 40 uh, kilometers, okay? So basically... The Golden Circle has like three main attractions associated with it. And there's some other attractions, you know, along the way. All right. So the Golden Circle itself, it's basically in a name. It's kind of like golden, orangey, yellowy-ish. But along the way, along this like circle, there's like these three main attractions. So you've got like Gulfless Waterfalls Gorge. That was amazing. There's the Geyser. Uh, geothermal area. And then, of course, this thing Valir itself. Okay. So now, Gulfless Waterfalls and Geyser Thermal, uh, the Geyser Thermal area, those um, stops I will discuss in another video. Um, I will say this it's not on a golden circle. The one thing I did not get a chance to visit was basically the Penis Museum, you know, because I wanted to see it. It's like a whole museum on the peen. But today, we're just going to focus on thing Valir. So one of the things is it, it's basically been named as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And so basically it's one of those places that holds like this amazing cultural, like scientific and geological type of significance or importance, right? It has been deemed as a major thing. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that you have like this Eurasian and is it American? North American plates? I can't remember, but there's like these whole tectonic plates and they did some weird thing and it caused this rift. I don't know. Do your research. I want to just give you a little bit of trivia about Thing Valir. Okay. Besides the fact that it's been deemed as a UNESCO World Heritage Landmark, important site of the world situation, you know, for those of you who are into here, um, history, there's a whole bunch of like political significance and some other stuff and scientific stuff and everything else about this site. Okay. Look, I'm just all about the regular old regular touristy stuff. Okay. Um, let me give you a little bit of a, another trivia thing besides the fact that it's been deemed this world 
heritage site. I keep stressing that because that's one of the things that, you know, if you look it up. Did you guys know that Game of Thrones was filmed here? I mean, Game of Thrones was filmed in a couple of locations. Nevertheless, when you show up to the site, it is impressive. Like, the pictures don't necessarily do it justice. All right, I'm at Thing Valier on National Park. <laughs> <laughs> I can't with you. Look how fast this water is coming down through there. It's impressive. <laughs> it's so impressive. So then basically, let me just tell you about how we showed up. So my husband and I, we were like, okay, we're going to do this um, thing, Valier situation. Well, no, I said that. My husband was just kind of like, okay, tell me what's next. So, you know, since we were there for our anniversary and I planned, um, 100% of it. He was just kind of like, all right, whatever. So we show up to Thing Below National Park, right? Let me tell you how we were on the struggle bus because we get there and like some people are paying and some are not. You know, it is a national park. I mean, if you think about what happens in the States, we pay to get into national parks or some sort of park or whatever, right? You want to support your national parks. So we were like, how do we do this? Like, what is the, the situation is situational. So we had to figure out how to pay. And if I remember correctly, we just needed to use our credit card, which was fine. But yeah, I was like, this is a situation. And we didn't want to be like the tacky black people who showed up and didn't pay to get in. I don't even remember what the cost was. I'm sure if I look on my credit card or was it his credit card, I don't remember who paid for it. Um, it wasn't that bad. And I say this because if you are in Iceland, like if you're a tourist in Iceland, it is super expensive. So, but I know when we went during that time frame, it wasn't too bad. But anyway, so we, we show up to the park and we're like, you know, trying not to be tacky, right? So we made sure we paid for our access into, you know, the park. So we get there and of course, just like walking into it, it's just beautiful all around. It's all dramatic. I mean, and I was like, I don't know. I think I was just like being extra in my mind because like my husband, he's not the most emotional person. He's kind of like, that's nice, whatever. And I'm just kind of like, look at it. You know, like it was just so pretty just walking up to like just to get in, like you get in, there's plenty of things that are like out there so you can read and they'll tell you whatever you need to know about the park. But it was like, like super amazing. It was like dramatic, you know, I was like in a really happy place. Anyway, so what they're saying is when you get there, like Thing Valier itself, apparently it sits between like these North American and Eurasian tectonic plates. So, you know, when I think of that, I think of like earthquake, like full on earthquake, but whatever it is, when you get up in there and it's like, it's like, you think you're looking at this mountain when you show up, or I don't know what this rock structure is. I was like, what, what, what is this? But you show up and then once you get in within the structure, it's something like split it. It was actually pretty amazing. I had the chance to, like, I, I remember when we got in and, and we walked to the left and there was like this beautiful like waterfall situation. I have all kinds of footage of that. It was really great. We went towards the right and it's like you're going through this rift valley and it's just so much to see. But I think we got to the point because we were getting tired that we didn't climb the entire situation. But I was like, holy cow, like all I kept thinking about, and I'm not trying to be like that girl, but like it definitely made me think of Viking. I don't know what it was. It made me think of like something that you see in the movies. Hence, that's why you see like Game of Thrones filmed here. But it made me, I don't know, it just put me in this mindset of like, man, there were people who probably walked up and through this who had like, I don't know, loincloths and, and swords and, and horses. Stop judging me. OK, but I'm just telling you about my perspective. As so when I was visiting this national park, you know, I was like all about like just taking it in, you know. So here I am on my anniversary with my husband and he lives a little bit more black and white and I have a little bit more gray about me. Right. So he he's the kind of person he could go in. He appreciates it. That's it. And then there's me. I'm like, look at it. I want to take pictures and film. And he's like, 
So then he kept photo bombing me, which was so annoying because I wanted to get some like the landscape by itself. This is a really good time. If you are enjoying this video, go ahead and like this video and then leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if this is the kind of content you want to see. Let me know if you are enjoying the footage. Let me know if you're enjoying my commentary. Anyway, so let me tell you, let me just get back on into it. When I was visiting this national park, there weren't that many black people there. I think we were the only ones there. Now, I saw black people in country, but as far as the touristy part, Yeah, it was just me and my husband. There were some locals who were visiting. Um, maybe they were just bored. I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to visit it. But the local populace, the, the people who are, you know, in Iceland, from my experience, they were some of the nicest people. But they're also very, like, I don't want to say they're emotionless, but they're like cut and dry, like that to the point. So they don't mince a lot, a lot of words. But anyway, I digress. Thing Valer, it wasn't that far to get to. Um, it's very beautiful. It has mountains. It has a waterfall. It has everything. It's just a really beautiful place. I don't know why I was so enamored by it. I'm sure locals who may have visited that place multiple times are like, meh. So. Look, I guess I'll go ahead and end this. Um, I really had a good time visiting this um, spot along the Golden Circle. I would suggest if you have only like two or three days in Iceland, I chose to tour the Golden Circle and I cherry picked the main things out of it. I would prefer to have spent maybe four days or so, four to five days. I wanted to get to that those Northern Lights. But it just wasn't in the cards for us at the time. However, I don't think you need like a week in Iceland. I think three to four days, probably a good four days is good. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it. Let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs>